Well, it's been a tough week for the Democrats agenda. The Supreme Court handing down landmark rulings on student loans, affirmative action and religious rights. Now some on the far left are upset. Sopranos actor Michael Imperioli weighing in on social media, quote, I've decided to forbid bigots and homophobes from watching The Sopranos, The White Lotus, Goodfellas, or any movie or TV show I've been in. Thank you, Supreme Court, for allowing me to discriminate and exclude those who I don't agree with and am opposed to. Meanwhile, AOC had this to say. The Supreme Court is far overreaching their authority. These are the types of rulings that signal a dangerous creep towards authoritarianism and centralization of power in the court. In fact, we have members of the court themselves, with Justice Elena Kagan, saying that the court is beginning to assume the power of a legislature. And I believe, frankly, that we really need to be having conversations about judicial review um, as a check on the courts as well. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a lot to take in. So, Joey, going to what AOC was just speaking to right there, she was saying that the Supreme Court's opinions were essentially abuse of power going towards authoritarianism. What do you say about yeah, when that? Yeah, you, when you become a freshman member of Congress, you go through what's called freshman orientation. And essentially what they do is they give you a crash course to explain to you how the legislative body works. You know, like the little bill, the cartoon, I'm a bill, you know, the singing and dancing. They try to get you to understand the actual technical process. I think they should do something that, that, has, that has the whole balance of power and how the judicial system works and what the Supreme Court does for people like AOC as well, who obviously just does not understand the legal process. She, her biggest thing is, well, 70% of Harvard's advocates are white. They didn't even touch the legacy uh, entrances. Well, you know what? You can file a lawsuit if you can find someone withstanding, and maybe we can take that away too. The idea that, you know, well, that's not fair. What about this? That's not the purpose of the Supreme Court, they're not supposed to legislate from the bench. And in all three of these decisions, they did not legislate. They protected our rights from either like Colorado's legislation in one or in this case with, with uh, affirmative action legislation or, or, or policies that are antiquated to the reality of our demographics today. Well, and when, you know, Raymond, when she brought up the legacy, I mean, she makes a good point there. Not everything is fair, but what the Supreme Court essentially said was the decision making shouldn't be based on race. It should be based on what an individual brings. And with that is race, whether they have a legacy status, there are other things and it just shouldn't be based solely on race. But I want to ask you, I want to go to that Colorado case a little bit, you know, Michael Imperioli, the guy from Sopranos, that's where I know him from mostly. Great actor. You know, he put up this big Instagram post and it makes me think that he doesn't really understand what happened because he, essentially the Colorado case was that you had this person who creates websites and they said it goes against their moral standards right. to create websites for same-sex couples. But they are a private business and that was their choice and the Supreme Court sided with them. Uh, why, I mean, Michael Imperioli seems to get it wrong. What do you think? Well, not unlike AOC, he misunderstands what's happening here. This is a court, that they're not making anything up. They're interpreting these cases based on the Constitution. It's a very narrow ruling, Michael, and it's so narrow, it touches you, in fact. It only touches not every business, but those that involve expression. And what they're saying is the government yes. cannot compel you or me or even you, Michael, from saying things or taking a role that violates your deeply held beliefs, or in the words of uh, Justice uh, uh, Gorsuch, defy your conscience. He's protecting our individual liberty and conscience in the way we express ourselves and what government can compel us to do. That's all the case says. Doesn't mean the gays and lesbians can't be served at a restaurant or, or Walmart or Home Depot. Those things don't demand expression. But when you're talking about you want me to create something as a cake maker or a website maker or an actor, that's different because now you're compelling my involvement as a creative. That's all this was. And as far as AOC saying the court overreached their authority, no, my dear, you are overreaching your authority. <laughs> this is the third branch of government. It is sacrosanct. And it is a protection and a hedge against the malice of the other branches. That's what this is about. How dare she try to stack this court or undermine their authority. We're in big trouble if we go down that path. Well, talking about big trouble, Biden had a really bad week, Tammy. In fact, they brought in the big guns to try and help rally some support. Take a look. Hey, Barack. Hey, Joe. Good to see you, man. Number four, Joe might even call you. Not a joke. Can you pitch in and get $5 right now? I know Joe will appreciate it. 
Thanks, Obama. I mean, they, they don't talk about, you know, how they're going to fight immigration and uh, help the economy. But, hey, Joe Biden may call you if you give $5. Yeah, but he won't know who he's calling. That's the problem. He <laughs> won't know joke. it's you. Uh, it's, it's awful. And that was pathetic. This is the greatest country on earth. And this is what it's like Sesame Street, right? Mm. Uh, so that's our problem is you've got, uh, I think you can see the contempt when this is the commercial reaching out to people in, in you know, American citizens. That's just, it just, it's contemptuous because we all deserve better. And especially when you're looking at, like, I just, when you think of, like, AOC as an example, there have been cases that the SCOTUS has decided that's been good for the Democrats and have been decided for, for Biden. And they didn't say any of that when, when it's good for them. So when it's good for them, they're like toddlers, right? It's good, and so they like it. But if it's just a little bit that they don't like, then everything has to go out. Uh, and people have to realize that. We see this kind of frenzy that happens when they don't get their way. And what do you do with toddlers when they start screaming? You give them a timeout. And, you, you know, you just you make sure they know who the boss is. And that's what we have to do with elections. But, but I, I do have to say also, when we're looking at the, the nature of the complaints from the left, they just add into the division, right? It adds into this whole idea that SCOTUS is bad when it's convenient, that other Americans, you know, we all want to just discriminate. We're sitting here thinking about how can we be bigots? And certainly, as a gay woman, I can say with, with that one decision, with every decision, Dershowitz has said this and others, that these decisions on affirmative action and on, on freedom of expression are classically liberal decisions, hmm. right? Every American civil rights movement was based on being left alone, but not being, you know, uh, imprisoned or arrested or treated differently because of who you were. These kinds of decisions reinforce those ideas. So I think that's what Americans have got to relearn yeah. because that's the important, that's the reason why we're here. Certainly, it feels very misrepresented in the media. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.